This is The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Roadmap. I'm your host, Ted Jenkins, exclusively here on America's Small Business Network. Always go to ASBN.com. On The Roadmap, every week we bring you some of the brightest and best CEOs and entrepreneurs all around the country, people that have started businesses, they've scaled them, and yes, maybe some of them have done an exit stage left. Now, a lot of people have been asking me in the business community, what about AI? What's happening with AI? How do I use it in my business? How should I market it? I'm so delighted today to have Jeff Pedowitz, the CEO of the Pedowitz Group. There is no, I don't think across the country, there are a lot of people that say that they're experts, but not only are you a marketing expert, but you're also an AI expert. Just Tell the folks that are watching first just what the Pedowitz Group does, and then I want to dive into uh, AI. Well, in simplest terms, we help our clients use technology to drive more revenue and reach their customers. And AI, of course, is a great example of amazing technology. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I remember doing an interview with Fran Tarkington, and you know, famous Hall of Fame quarterback, and, and he the said, scramble. Ted, he's like, without sales, you don't have a business. You don't have, a, and it's true. A lot of people that are entrepreneurs think to themselves, you know, I've got to get operations, I need technology, but without revenue, you literally don't have a business. So how how do you see the world of AI just at a high level starting to play out in terms of of marketing? Because I think a lot of business owners don't even know what it is and, and how they would implement it. This is a generational force. So much like the internet was the smartphone, this is a once in 20 years type of thing where AI will absolutely transform every part of the business and even our personal lives as well. So it's having a massive right. impact. Uh, already marketing is leading the way. About 70% of marketing organizations are already experimenting with AI in some way, shape or form. So for the folks that have never used this before is is chat GPT really the place to start? I feel like that's the one that got popular, kind of broke the internet, if you will, very quickly. For somebody that has no budget, Jeff, like a small business owner that's watching this, can they use a platform like that to help them generate more revenue? Absolutely, it's a great place to start. I would recommend, in a small amount of money, pay $20 a month and get the premium <laughs> version. It would be well worth it. But yes, it, it can be served as a personal muse. Now, something like ChatGPT, it's a, it's a broad-based application. It's a large language model. You could use it to write a business plan, use it to write a sales email, use right. it to do research. There's a lot of things you can do. And then we're seeing this just incredible uh, innovation and so many technology companies are starting with very specific use cases. And so if you're really going good on AI, you should look at a platform called Jasper for marketing. because Jasper? Jasper, yeah. So Jasper is specifically tailored for a marketer. And so it's trained its models to write all different kinds of content, blogs, ads, emails, white papers, and uh, it, it's gonna just serve you much better. So you don't even have an excuse anymore to say, gosh, I should have a blog somewhere on my website or I should start a blog, but you know what? I'm a terrible writer because ChatGPT can write this thing for you, yeah? ChatGPT can, and then go buy a Grammarly uh, uh, yeah. subscription, and of course, Grammarly on top of this will make you a world-class writer overnight. So ChatGPT, plus Grammarly, you put those together and all of a sudden you become one of the best writers in the country. You're, you're, off, to, you're off to the races. But don't, you know, just let's just back up for a second. If I, I don't care, small or large company, if I've got a website today, uh, I should be, I should have content on there, whether I'm blogging or I'm doing YouTube videos and use some AI with that, I should have that on my website, right? Oh, you absolutely should. I mean, if you still have a brochure where and you're not keeping your website up, there's really almost no point to have a website. So, uh, of course, though, websites, as important as they are, uh, if you, it's even more important to have a stronger social media presence, particularly really? if you're marketing to consumers. Um, so it's much better for you to have um, a flash page uh, up on Instagram or TikTok than it is to even have a web page. Do you, do you see a lot of companies today failing in social media? I think... Part of what's challenging, you know, maybe we'll see how AI plays into this, is that some people have a presence on LinkedIn. Facebook feels like it's kind of a dying duck. You know, to a degree, I all know it's massive. You got Instagram, you have TikTok, you've got YouTube. 
Where do, where does somebody <clears throat> even start if they're they're like I don't know which way to go? Well, I wouldn't say they're failing. I, I think they're just not playing the game. I, I mean, right. There's there's a lot of social channels out there, and each channel appeal appeals to a different demographic. So, for example, I mean, my kids are on TikTok and Instagram right. and Snapchat, and honestly, I have no desire to be on it. But I do <laughs> recognize I recognize it's an important channel, and so if I want to reach certain demographics that's really important and it's cost effective so the younger generation now is almost getting all of its news through TikTok. they don't go to online to cnn or msnbc or fox news right. or anything like that so i think it's more about understanding who is your audience where do they go to get their information and how do i make sure i'm putting the right content in that channel and content that you would put on your website is different than how you would put it on instagram or TikTok right. or snapchat do you think that some companies make a huge mistake by not building an ideal client avatar, if you will, that they go to market, they try to sell products or services, but they haven't really thought through with their marketing who they're actually targeting? A lot of companies think they know who their target is, <laughs> and they think that they're going after it, but the reality is they're not. And you'll coach people on that in the yeah. business? You'll show people on that? I'm curious, you know, because this whole world of marketing, I feel like it's, it's an ever-evolving beast. I mean, it just continues to morph all the time. But there are a lot of people I remember years ago that said phone calling is dead, although I still feel like it's alive. And now I hear a lot of people say, Jeff, like email marketing is dead, but it's not right. One. And then two, how can you use AI to more effectively get your emails and, and create better funnels? Uh, email marketing is absolutely not dead. It's still thriving. It's still one of the most cost-effective ways that you can reach email. your customers or prospects. Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, because look, even if you're just using Outlook or Gmail, you can, you're not hardly paying anything for that at right. all. So it's a very effective channel, but like all channels, we, we have so much noise. I mean, think about when we were kids, right? There was three channels on TV, right. and we were our parents' remote. You know, we'd stand there, and we would like turn the channel, like CBS or NBC. Yeah. And today, how many streaming channels do we have? I think, of course, so in our many. household, I'm embarrassed to say, I think we have like every single subscription possible. Yeah. Thousands of shows on TV uh, to watch. Well, the same thing is happening with all these various different channels. There's just many different ways where people are consuming, entertaining, getting information, socializing. So we have to pick the right channel. But we also have to know who we're targeting, who they are, what their needs are, their attributes, their demographics, their behaviors, their motives, what problems are they looking to solve. And then we have to tailor our approach towards them. So many businesses still lead with a product-based marketing message, right. which is not how to sell. Is, is, AI, can, is AI smart enough today that if you try to write a copy that you think can lead people down a funnel, can you actually talk to AI about how you might want your funnel? Is it smart enough to be adaptive for that? It very much is. Uh, and, and now certainly, look, you still have to uh, check it. And yeah. it, it has uh, hallucinations, as they say. And sometimes <laughs> it can give you, it looks really convincing. It sounds right. amazing, right. but it's not true at all. So you still have to go through it. As uh, Reagan used to say, trust but verify. So yeah. you have to go through it. But it's excellent at creating outlines and structure and helping you think through the process and you iterate, you treat it like a muse. I mean, just like uh, Tony Stark does with Jarvis right. and, and Marvel and Iron Man. That's how you can treat AI now. And uh, voice is right there. So even if you if ChatGPT, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your computer, just talk and it will respond in real time. It's amazing. What's the danger in this? You know, I think a lot of people that see television programs hear about the excitement of ChatGPT, like, yeah, I clicked the button and it wrote a book for me, you know, and then the other side of it, like, somebody in Des Moines got deep faked over a, a voice recognition thing that there was their mom was asking for a check and it legitimately sounded like their mom. I've seen videos of people that look like Tom Cruise. Uh, is, it, is it too dangerous? How do, you, how do you protect yourself on the other side, you know, as a business owner? Well, sure, with, with uh, great power comes great responsibility, <laughs> yeah, right? So, so every new iteration of technology produces new opportunities and, and new challenges. So any business still has to take steps to safeguard its information, protect confidentiality, provide training for its employees, put in governance standards, because if we wait for the right. government to come up with laws about AI, we're gonna be waiting a long time. So we have to take those steps. Uh, but if we're verifying it, if we're editing it, I mean, it's like anything else. If we just ask AI to write something and then we turn it in and we don't even bother, well, you're never gonna get something that's that's human-oriented or warm or have context. Right, right. Uh, so shame on you if you take that approach. That's the lazy man's way of doing it. So 
Where do you take the Pedowitz Group from here? You've been one of the top revenue marketing companies in the country for many, many years. Now you get into AI. Where, where do you see this business headed over the next three to five years? How do you exit this thing one day if you wanted to? Uh, still having a lot of fun and enjoying <laughs> work with the customers. We're currently rolling up a lot of companies and we're in an You're buying companies. We're buying now. companies, yeah, yeah, because it's a great way to, to build value for our customers and, and build a, a creative value for our partners yeah. and have a good exit in, in a few years. So that's kind of our, our business strategy. In terms of where we go, we're really excited about AI because we're already using it as, as to help us improve our delivery, improve our efficiencies. We're designing new lead scoring models based on AI. We're producing better campaigns. We're coordinating more channels. We're able to do a lot more with a lot right. less resources. And we're teaching our clients how to do that as well. So, and we're only at the beginning here. Uh, this is going to have a multi-trillion dollar impact over the next five to 10 years, AI will globally. And so, of course, in our world, I, it won't be all that, but, but we're hoping to have, <laughs> have, a, have a good piece of it. I think a lot of people would take just some millions, let alone, That's let right. alone yeah, trillions yeah. on there. You mentioned Jasper is a great marketing tool for people on AI that they can look at themselves. On the CRM side, do you have one or two favorites for people looking to get CRMs that may integrate well with AI? I, I mean, you, you look at the big guys. I mean, Salesforce continues, of course, to, to really set the standard, uh, do, a real, do a really good job. Microsoft's got a great platform. HubSpot. HubSpot's not just for small businesses anymore. Yeah, I love HubSpot. Yeah, I, I mean, multiple businesses that I have. I love uh, it. And, and HubSpot, as opposed to, well, Microsoft has built their own platform. And Salesforce's sales cloud CRM is theirs. But then, of course, they bought other pieces. But HubSpot, everything's been built natively from the ground up. So everything is designed to work with each other. I think the user experience is better. It's, it's a lot easier to use and drive adoption. So they have an incredible platform. But honestly, you can't go wrong with it with any. And of them. will it be a big independent company that takes over the AI space, or do you think Google and Microsoft will battle it out? How do you see this? How do you see this playing out? You know, I think the big guys will always have a seat at the table. <laughs> right, you, right. you know, and they, I I always joke they probably, they, probably, they probably all get together and play poker on Sunday night, you know, at Barry <laughs> Ellison's house or something like that. And My like, AI, your that's AI. That's right. They're plotting you know. how to take over the world. <laughs> uh, but but you know, look, I think it's just like the dot com. There was a lot of us. But yeah. there's a few breakthrough companies like yeah. Google and, and others. Netflix came, you know, and, and took over and, and changed Blockbuster. So we're going to see disruptors right. in the next few years. We don't know who they are yet. But we're going to see a few. We're also going to see or not even hear about many, many of the Because today, there's over 60,000 software companies on AI. That's crazy. And, and, and it's growing more all the time. It's so for the folks watching today, how can they get a copy of your book? Where can they find that? Uh, just go to Amazon. It's right there, AI Revenue Architect. Uh, they can also go to jeffpedowitz.com, and that will redirect them to our website, and they can pick it up. That's great stuff. Thanks for uh, chatting with us in the studio today. Uh, Jeff Pedowitz, foremost expert on AI, the Pedowitz Group. If your business is struggling or you're trying to think about how to drive top-line revenue, he may be the guy to talk to. And for sure, what you should be doing here over the next 12 months is thinking about how you incorporate AI into all of your marketing so you can drive top-line revenue. Hopefully that increases bottom-line profits and you get to exit your money for a bigger multiple down the road. I'm Ted Jenkin, and this has been this episode of The Roadmap. Thanks for watching ASBN.com. Thanks for watching The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins.